In this podcast, we're going to continue with the, obviously, with the Bill of Rights Amendments with going over the Sixth Amendment. This one, we're going to start by reading the uh, amendments. Uh, first, obviously, please continue, consider being one of my patrons at Patreon. It's uh, www.patreon.com slash challenge history. Uh, the levels start at $1.00. Next level is ten dollars. Then it goes to twenty-five dollars, fifty dollars, and one hundred dollars, depending on which level we want to be at. Uh, currently, there are no giveaways, but uh, there will be uh, when I establish those levels. Um, I uh, this is to basically go toward uh, both uh, helping me out as I am on disability for back issues. I have sp uh, spinal fusion that I had, uh, which limits my mobility, they had to remove the whole disc and uh, replace it with uh, actual cage. Uh, I do have chronic vertigo and OCD on top of that. Uh, uh, and it's also to help me get an actual living because uh, I'm at the level where I can get uh, advertisements on my videos so this will help me kind of develop an actual living and it's to help get me uh, where I can uh, help get my fiance here uh, and that that will basically uh, help with that you'll actually see the whole kind of story behind that uh, and I really appreciate any type of gift you can give me with that uh, but uh, You can do that with it or even just be nice enough just to uh, share the uh, just to uh, be nice enough to share the videos and uh, on social media and to subscribe that would be great as well and uh, now back to the actual video first, first we need to read the sixth amendment uh, in all pro uh, criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy to a, uh, speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which the district shall have been previously asserted by law, and be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, be confronted by the witnesses against him, uh, to be uh, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense basically what this is uh, establishing is for the, the the actual ability for them to get an actual fair quick trial so they're not sitting there uh, in jail or uh, sitting there wait, waiting for the actual trial. Now, uh, and w waiting for an actual trial date to be set. Now, there are certain cases with it when we have the cases of such as like immigration because of standards that have been set because of uh, the uh, cases of uh, people like uh, uh, people uh, that have actually created an incentive to enter the country and that's created a huge influx of illegal immigration which has caused an immigration problem and that that's a complete utter, uh, another different issue but beyond that issue with it, uh, we need to talk about the other problems of immigration, or, 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 or I would say with speedy trial. Now that goes down into what we would call uh, the stuff down in uh, Guantanamo Bay. Now those people are essentially sitting there in limbo without access to a speedy trial. That's essentially violating uh, these things of criminal prosecutions. It does not separate uh, those prosecutions from what would be uh, any type of prosecution. It does not matter if we're talking military tribunal or not. And either A, they have 
you, they have one of three options. Release them, set them to a middle, uh, put them under a military tribunal, or give them an actual uh, criminal prosecution. And they must be put under one of three actions. And if they uh, do not have enough evidence to put uh, them under any type of prosecution, they must be released. Because you've essentially held a person without trial illegally under the Constitution. And it doesn't matter what they're trying to state, saying that they're a danger. They still must follow the Constitution. Regardless of what standard they're trying to state, saying, oh, we need to keep them here for extracting information. If you're using that, you're trying to use torture for that, basically that's a violation of the Geneva Convention. You can't do that. And we've also found that torture does not work to actually give legitimate information. You will get fraudulent information because they're going to state anything to stop any torture, and they're going to give you erroneous information. So when we look at this, we need to understand that to get the... Uh, to get actually legitimate information, you need to actually get it through other causes of actually just standard interrogation. And that this is where we get, uh, this is why we don't want such things as forced confessions. Forced confessions get, send the wrong people to jail and they basically, they don't give you the actual legitimate, the legitimate, uh, uh, intelligence on what happened. Now when we talk about this, this is not also, this is not only referring when it's referring to criminal prosecutions, it's not only referring to the actual point of the trial, and this is what needs to be understood. Um, it's uh, when it's saying you need to be informed of the nature of the accusation, when uh, uh, such as things, the nature of the accusation that's also referring to things of the warrant as well when we're talking about such things as uh, with the whole uh, status of the criminal prosecution and basically this is the whole point and once that warrants issued they must be uh, they must be given the actual nature of it for the search warrant they must be given access to uh, basically being notified of that search warrant. Uh, once, once you start uh, seizing, uh, seizing information, they must be fully, fully aware after that point of searching. Because you're essentially seize, uh, once, once you start seizing records. Now, if you're doing such a thing, uh, Now, if you're uh, doing uh, other things, it would be uh, just a temporary uh, wiretap. That's a different case, but uh, that's that goes in a different uh, case scenario with it. But you're, if you're actually doing things such as seizing uh, records and actually keep, and actually holding uh, holding the actual information, not just directly listening in. But actually recording these uh, records, once you actually engage in the actually recording of records, you've actually what it called, you've actually gone into another area, and that's where we get into what the NSA is doing. Now, what this means is, uh, in, e in either fashion, you need an actual warrant. Uh, an actual individual warrant as well, and this is what's uh, in either either fashion we we find this, and that's where we get under the what do you call it, number f the Fourth Amendment, where they need to provide a uh, individual warrant to show even in even uh, in some type of secrecy, like let's say you're going after uh, a mafia member that might, or or some type of person that might be might develop secrecy when you're trying to wiretap someone or. I, I shouldn't say like that, but like uh, electro electronically surveil someone, which means you're not going to record the uh, material, but you're going to listen in on the material, which is completely different 
from actually recording it. Once you record it, means you're actually taking records, which means you're actually uh, you're actually taking uh, you're actually taking something of uh, ownership of their pro uh, property, and that's that becomes a different issue. And that that's where some of the things on this with it, and meaning they then you have to then give uh, uh, the nature of that once that stuff turn, turns over. And that's where the whole different thing. Now you can do a listen in, but that that's which is what they usually do. But once you start once you start the actual process of the actual recording, that's a different thing. What they usually do with uh, active uh, criminals is to, uh, for the safety, is they usually do a listen in to basically uh, bust them in the middle of a crime, and they and they usually take down notes, which is a complete different activity. That's what they usually do on uh, on usually people like. Uh, uh, mafia members and stuff like that that's what they've done historically in uh major areas they'll even they've even done it historically in churches and stuff and they'll try to they'll try to even get people uh in there to actually listen in on these members and that that's what they've done with them so when we talk now we talk about what the nsa has done with fisa and what needs to be understood is they need to understand right here is you need to be number one is uh you need to be told what crime has been committed well when we know about that we know that it's essentially under these fisa warrants no crime has ever been committed under these individuals that basically is uh well over 99% of these people have never committed a have never committed a crime and every every piece of evidence with it it's it's in it's over like 99.99 repeating percent of every piece of evidence that they're collecting is non-criminal activity so that they're basically collecting so every time they do that they're essentially illegally collecting because it's not it doesn't fit within the idea of that we're not doing under criminal prosecution and regardless of what their reasoning is it doesn't fit under the Constitution this is something that needs to be noted and then when we get to the idea of these these FISA courts uh, the, you only have two parties there you have FISA judge and then you have the government agents. There is no uh, advocacy for the people that are having their uh, information taken. There's uh, you never have that, and which means that there uh, that basically is there is no idea of defense, which is another violation. There isn't, there isn't even uh, given that idea as well. So it's a complete and utter violation of the Sixth Amendment, which is which needs to be understood. Because you're, uh, even if you're stating that, that the, this stuff has to be kept in secret, if we're going to give them that, that, that point, we're not allowing them to basically, uh, we're not allowing any counsel to the defense. We're negating any counsel. Uh, we're we're not even uh, allowing the person to actually be there. We're just basically saying that the decision is being made between uh, the prosecution and the judge, which is completely uh, in, which is basically not even would not even what would be considered anything any different than any kangaroo court. Which is why we see the uh, percentages well above 99% are approved. It's something like 99.9 something percent of all FISA applications are approved. The only times that they wouldn't be approved are either A, they're filled out wrong, 
or B, B, uh, they're actually targeting a specific uh, individual that would actually be considered unlawful. Those are the only types of things that would actually be uh, times where it be uh, blocked. And there was one where it was actually the only times where it was, it was one where uh, candidate Trump was actually one of the ones that was blocked and there were there were a couple other ones uh, throughout the years where that it was uh, viewed as uh, on, that it was viewed as the paperwork was filled out improperly and that's the only uh, times that it was actually since the actual application I think there was uh, there's been like eight or nine times it's been rejected by the courts since its actual inception and this should be a very very uh, scary proposition but when you look at this, this is not just the, we're, they're not just talking about the actual court proceedings. They're actually, uh, in this specific thing, they're talking about the actual whole process from the actual issuance of the warrants all the way on to the, uh, to the end of the court uh, proceeding. Uh, just short of the sentencing or j just short of uh, of the part of the sentencing and that's about it so basically this is a specific area of what they're doing when we talk about the actual penalties uh, that's uh that's it uh guarding against uh excessive uh penalties or excessive bail we're talk excessive uh bail for the person to be released that tends that goes under the eighth amendment but when we're talking about uh the actual idea of everything else until that's a uh, point we're talking about the sixth amendment Basically, the Fourth and Sixth Amendment tend to guard everything through that point. The Fifth Amendment tends to be uh, guarding uh, the actual rights within the uh, within the actual trial period, but uh, and actually up up until that point, like before the trial period and up and through the trial period, the the right of the person accused or possibly accused. But when we get to the actual uh, meat uh, of the actual trial, the actual uh, foundation of the trial uh, is usually judged within the points of the Fourth and the Sixth Amendments. Some of the core, some of the core ideas are also re, uh, are also kind of judged in the Seventh Amendments, but uh, all, and all criminal stuff judged in the Eighth Amendments. But the Sixth Amendment also has a lot of important things when dealing with it, and the problem is the Sixth Amendment is pretty much ignored because they automatically assume as long as you have a trial, a uh, speedy trial by jury, that. Uh, everything's just fine but the problem being is they don't look into it and understand it's the whole process it's not just the trial itself it's the whole process it just it says in criminal prosecutions basically meaning uh is for basic for the whole process for all these things on these accusations which means to actually get a warrant a warrant is an accusation that's what needs to be uh uh, be assumed is uh, and once you accuse someone you have to essentially uh, allow them to see that see the accusation and uh, once you start seizing stuff essentially this is records beyond an actual uh, electronic surveillance electronic surveillance uh, which is a uh, just a basic one not not actual recording and what we see with these actual places like in Utah that's actual recording and that's what they're doing they're not just basically directly listening in and then exiting out 
not just directly listening and very, very quickly looking for something, looking for keywords being said, and then exiting out where they're, uh, where that's happening. Now, if that were happening, that would be a completely different issue. And they could uh, make some type of justification if they could actually state that we're looking, f uh, that we're targeting specific individuals uh, or specific groups of individuals that are linked in with these uh, things. And they can actually make, uh, have warrants out for specific groups, such as violent gangs, uh, such as other things like that, that they could do. Then they could actually make their actual legitimate case. But in this case, what they're doing is they're doing everybody under these phone companies, and phone companies, as we've stated, are not individuals. They only act in individuals under law, and basically that's basically so they, uh, so when uh, a lawsuit comes through, so you do not have to list all uh, executive people, and so the executive people do not get sued as individuals, so it comes in as the actual corporation. So it, uh, it only takes away from the corporate assets. And that's the sole reason. The, cor the corporation is uh, it's in itself the uh, entity that does whatever it says in its business model. Now in the case of telecommunications or, uh, or one of these mass media companies with it such as uh, Spec uh, such as Spectrum or uh, Charter Spectrum or if it's Sprint or if it's Verizon or whatever it may be what their actual job is is mainly to hold records that's all they're doing their job is to hold records and uh, when the NSA if the NSA says it's collecting metadata well guess what Metadata is illegal to hold. Those are uh, those are not the uh, ownership of the uh, company. Those are the ownership of the individuals. The only thing they uh, they would have to get individual warrants for those for any metadata. They would have to get individual warrants of every single person. Which means they're going to Verizon customers. They would have to do one customer at a time and explain to the court why they need that that specific customer. Now they know that they can't. They uh, that's why uh, they would have to do that. Even asserting on Verizon, they would have to assert what criminal activity Verizon has done, and they have not done that to date. I mean, in either in either sense, but even though that 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 warrant would be illegitimate of what trying to state what Verizon has done they could not do that because and then uh, they would have to somehow uh, uh, somehow allow Verizon to have uh, even if they're allowing Verizon itself they would have to, or these other telecommunications or media companies they would have to allow them to have counsel in these uh, FISA hearings that has never happened it's only basically the the uh, it's only basically uh, the prosecution from the National Security uh, Administration, and the other side is the uh, FISA judge. And this would this is why you lead to like a ninety nine point something uh, a ninety nine and I think it's point nine something like nine one percent approval rating. Uh, for these warrants, well, you're going to get that when they're basically uh, only getting one side telling them uh, to approve of it. That's not an actual case. That's not an actual because you have no advocacy from the other side. Now, if you had at least minimum the ACLU arguing from the other side, you're going to get some type of legitimacy because they're going to explain, hey, this is not even a legal warrant. This is far from it. A legal warrant is is one individual person. You can't do that on a whole company. That uh, makes it illegitimate. And this is why we're talking about this. This is because let's say, for instance, you want to try an individual person. Well, let's go back to the warrant. 
you never gave uh, a warrant for that individual person. Guess what? Your warrant is null and your whole system is null and void because you were doing a, a, a bulk warrant. And that's the whole point. And this is why we actually do warrants like that because essentially the warrant you started out with this FISA stuff that you wanted to do this regardless if you're saying terrorism, it doesn't matter what you're trying to charge the person with or or what you think the person's doing acting with, it doesn't matter what your your accusation is. You need to have a legitimate uh, accusation uh, and then uh, you need to basically uh, make your case of why uh, you need this uh, individual warrant. Well, if you're charging people like Verizon, Sprint, Spec, uh, Charter Spectrum, if you're charging uh, AT&T, if you're charging those people, if you're charging those companies, well, if those, comp if those, those companies don't have, uh, if they never did any acts of terrorism or supported terrorism themselves, guess what? That case is going to fall right through and you don't have any legitimacy to it. This is why we have these individual warrants. So even if you support the idea of going after terrorists, uh, uh, you should support the idea of individual warrants and going after these people individually. And the only way that it's been successful over the years is actually by actually old-fashioned police work. And by, these, by grabbing these, these things on a bulk system, it's proven that it doesn't work here. It surely doesn't work overseas. They have an even bigger bulk system out in England, and we see what's, been, what's happened in cities like Manchester. They basically, you can, you can have multiple attacks, and they'll totally miss them. Uh, when, it, when you have these bulk collection things, they don't work at all. They're completely complete failures. The only thing that actually works is when you have old-fashioned uh, police work that works on individual liberty, individual warrants, and it's nothing else works. When you go with these bulk collection, you, you don't know where to find any of, any of these things. You uh, Well, I think it was somewhere here, and guess what? You hit, we're already on our uh, we've already filled basically two whole, uh, two whole massive government storage facilities. We're already building our third one. This means that we have now caught one person with this whole program, and we've already filled up two whole uh, storage facilities, and we're, and we're building a third one. This is a problem. If we have not caught one person, and we we filled two whole storage facilities up with nothing. But they don't want to delete any of this stuff. How about you take, you only need that one storage facility, you can get rid of the one in Utah, take your first storage facility, delete everything. And how about you start over and you start, uh, and you basically use just all, you'll focus on what you need. Get individual warrants, do the, uh, do actually your uh, job you need to, stop making the uh, security grid so weak so other countries can actually attack our security grid and could actually attack our energy grid because of it and you basically start working on these individual warrants and make the make the actual constitution work for us because that's the way these things have worked as i stated before we've uh that uh, terrorism has actually existed uh at least till the first century this means that our founders knew about terrorism well before this point. And that uh, when we have this thing, we know that, uh, that this thing can actually work. And that we know that the, uh, the terrorism tends to spike up during uh, more intervention. So we can tone down terrorism by cutting down intervention. And it's not very hard to do that. Just bring our people home. So when we look at this, we can actually say that uh, we can actually follow the Constitution, stop doing these bulk collection, actually allow people to have their actual uh, speedy trial, trial by jury, stop, uh, stop this uh, uh, 
both public uh, aid and uh, foreign aid, which will stop a lot of this uh, people that are coming over to our country because they think we're giving away free money, and it will uh, it will stop the backlog in the uh, immigration cases because they're going to say, well, hey, if you're not giving away free money, there's no reason to be here. And what will happen, and the actual war on drugs, you stop that, then there's not going to be any, uh, there's going to be less reason to uh, come here for the drug trade. And what's going to be the end result is that it's not going to be profitable for the drug trade either internationally. And the end result is going to be you're going to have very, very fast trials go right through. You're going to end a lot of the backlog from these uh, trying people on drug cases which is basically the majority of people that are in prison and you're going to see that basically there's not going to be much that's going to be prosecuted most of these things are going to be uh, very very little very little people are actually going to be going to prison and they're going to be taken taken off the people that are actually violent And then when it comes down to it, you're going to see that you're going to be informing people of their actual accusations and not trying to keep things hidden from people. And that's the way things should be. And that's what's called following the Constitution. Now, if you like this, like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Uh, make sure you share it all the way on social media uh, to your friends and uh, share it publicly. Uh, if you have any uh time make sure you uh uh or if you have any extra money i should say uh become a patron uh, that would be really really appreciated uh the uh information will be right here below and if uh you have any comments on it please leave comments below Please, no more in, insane comments. I've already gotten a couple that I've had to delete because they've just been completely off the wall. And uh, But if you have any legitimate comments, please leave them below or any, uh, any real legitimate questions, leave them below. I'll be feel, uh, feel free to answer those. And uh, I will do a, a nighttime... Uh, uh, live stream a little bit later. Bye everyone. It'll, it might be up before this video though. Bye everyone.